On the Lemonade Car Show tonight, OMVIC and protecting the rights of consumers. I'm Lorraine Sommerfeld, and this is the Lemonade Car Show. Tonight, we're talking about protecting the rights of consumers. As always, we'll be answering all of your car-related questions. Lemonade is brought to you by OMVIC. That's Ontario's vehicle sales regulator, and we're produced by the Automobile Protection Association. The APA fights for you, the consumer, and provides information and news on all parts of the industry. Visit our website at apa.ca or reach us by phone at 416-204-1444. Joining me today is Terry O'Keefe. He's the Director of Communications for OMVIC, and John Raymond. He's an industry consultant and APA advisor. Later, we'll be joined by Chris Muir, our mechanic from AutoWorks Off-Road in Oshawa. We'll also be taking your calls all evening, 800-968-7836. Welcome, Terry. Thank you. It's great to be back for another season. Nice to have you here for season five. Is it that many now? Yes. That's awesome. We go way back, as, we do. as the kids say. Yes, that's <laughs> awesome. I'm really glad you're here tonight. Let's dive right in on OMVIC. What is the latest stuff going on? Who are you busting and putting behind bars? Who are the bad guys? Who are the yeah. bad guys? Who are the bad guys? Yeah. Well, curbsiding never goes away. Uh, curbsiders, of course, are illegal, unlicensed dealers, commonly posing as private sellers. Uh, they just like they misrepresent themselves. They misrepresent the vehicles they, that they sell. Often, they're, you know, rebuilt wrecks or and something that's we're seeing a big uh, increase in is rolled back odometers. And on the on the dealer side, uh, all in price advertising continues to be an area of non-compliance that's of concern to us. And that's across Canada. That's an issue across Canada. Well, it, it is. Not every jurisdiction is it the law, but it has been the law here in Ontario for six years. So there's no excuse for dealers to have you know hidden fees that are uh, tacked on top of their advertised prices. Okay, so for viewers, tell them what all-in pricing means. What can't be added on? Because a lot of them will still try. So what so explicitly if, is the cost? Yeah, if a dealer advertises a price for a vehicle, that price has to include all fees and charges that that dealer intends to collect with the exception of HST mm -hmm. and licensing. So essentially when a, a consumer goes into a dealership and they're told that the price is $15,000 and they agree to it's $15,000 plus HST. And licensing. Okay. It's not $15,000 plus an admin fee, an air conditioning tax fee, an OMVIC fee. Mm -hmm. It's one price plus tax. And if that price is advertised on the net, in a paper, in a magazine, on, on a, a little flyer. sign hanging from the rear view mirror of the car itself. That's an advertisement. So that price has to include all the fees. And as, as John said, it's, it's those regular fees that we've gotten used to, the freight, the admin. But some dealers also pre-install you know, products or services on their car, the, whether it's so the etching stuff, the etching, nitrogen in the tires, uh, those types of things that they've already pre-installed. So if they've pre-installed it, they intend to charge for it. Those fees have to be included in the advertised price. And depending on province, and this is the caveat here, is that if it's a manufacturer's ad, so if you see an ad and it's, let's call it Nissan, um, and there's a price point, that not, that's not necessarily all tax in. So some brands are much better and they follow the compliance of the dealers. One of them is General Motors is a good example. Um, okay. Other brands are not. So, so consumers so get fooled and confused and nobody reads the small print that... Well, you when know. you see an ad in a newspaper, one of those old-timey newspapers, <laughs> um, you have to decide if this is a dealer's ad or a manufacturer's ad. And sometimes when you're car shopping, you're looking at the car and you go, oh, and you're looking at the big, bold price. Mm -hmm. and, and this is pretty normal. You get emotional on this stuff and you it's see it. So you want to be apples to apples. Even if it's the same vehicle, you want to make sure the ads you're comparing. It's, it's really, are. really important that consumers... I mean, I know consumers do so much research now about the car they're going to buy from, but they really don't do that much research about perhaps the dealer they're going to buy from or about what their rights are. And that's an excellent example, this, the manufacturer advertisement in the newspaper, because it does confuse consumers. They listen to our show and they hear you talking about all-in price advertising and they see that newspaper ad and they take it to the dealership and find out there's all these extra fees and they go, you can't do that. Yeah. And now that poor dealer has to explain, and I mean that poor dealer has to and explain to, to the consumer, yeah. that's not my advertisement. Mm -hmm. That's the manufacturer's advertisement and they don't have to play by the same rules we do. Are we going to see, and I ask you this every year, 
Um, the government, it's mandatory all-in pricing for dealers. Are we going to see all-in pricing for manufacturers? Are they going to have to come into line so there's not this discrepancy that's, that's misleading? That's a good He oh, hates I, that question. Well, <laughs> no, it, it, I, I can tell you that the dealer associations, the used car dealers association, Trillium Automobile Dealers Association, the new car dealers here in Ontario, all want to see manufacturers advertise by the same rules dealers have to. The consumer groups want that too. Well, it Ombic is the regulator, the regular, they we want, want it that. too. Yeah. There's only one group that doesn't want manufacturers to have to apply, uh, to have to abide by all yeah. in pricing, and that's the manufacturers. Yeah. And it's not universal. There are brands like we just mentioned yes. one earlier mm -hmm. who do right. commendably, yeah. you know, abide by the, the, those regulations, but uh, many don't. For our uh, viewers, if they go on to Omvic, they will on the website. There's lots of great information on this specific subject that the APA directs their members and non-members to. And you also have listings of places you've busted. Oh, absolutely. This and is the coolest part of your website, actually. It, it, <laughs> it, anytime a dealer is disciplined for breaching our code of ethics, not only are they listed on the website, but the discipline decision itself is there. You can see exactly what it is that they have done. If the dealership has been charged or convicted or has faced a proposal to revoke or suspend their license. That information is also available on our website by just searching the dealership's name. Any web page, upper right corner, you can search for a dealer or salesperson and you'll find all that information. It's, and we must, by law, make that information available to the public. So, Terry, how much are they fined? And do they pay these fines? Well, the, if a dealership is fined, if it's a dealer who's fined, they have to pay the fine if they intend to stay in business. And where are those fines typically? If the fine is in, in court, those fines get paid to the province, of course. Uh, if it's a disciplined fine, those fines are actually paid to OMVIC. And they can vary. Um, you know, we, from this curbsider that we were referencing earlier, who was fined you know, $393,000, uh, but the typical fine if a dealer is, uh, if it's the first offense for breaching the all-in price advertising regulations, depending on how many ads it was, depending on if they've paid the consumers back what they were overcharged, that can bring the fine down. But a typical five to $15,000 would be a first fine. And do you feel that that has an impact? Oh, on absolutely. their operations? Absolutely No, no dealer's going to want their name hanging on the Omvic and site. That's that's exactly <laughs> no dealer why. wants to lose $15,000. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, the monetary is important, but yeah. you're absolutely right. Reputation is important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, something consumers should know is when you do buy a car, there's the Omvic fee right on the big yellow thing. It's 10 bucks when mm -hmm. you buy a car. That's the funding that you run from. Yeah, a lot of people think that we're funded by the government, the government yeah. and we're not. It's important to know. Yeah, uh, OMVIC's not. funding comes from the licensing fees for dealers and salespeople. All dealers and salespeople in the province of Ontario must be licensed by OMVIC. And that $10 fee for each car that a dealer sells or leases, they have to remit $10 to OMVIC and they are allowed to pass that $10 fee on to the customer. Yeah, because every salesperson has that certificate framed in their cubicle. That's the course that they take. Yeah. yeah. So they're taught a standardized selling. That's a, that's a really good point. Um, in order to become licensed, whether you're a salesperson or a dealer, there's a number of different steps. It's not just, hey, pay the, pay the money and get my license. Uh, there's, a, there's a course in automotive law and ethics that they have to successfully pass through Georgian College. Uh, there's criminal background checks that they have to undergo. If it's a dealer, if you wanted to open your own dealership, you know, it, the OMBIC's going to make sure that your location is approved by the town. And they're going to actually want to know what is the source of funding for your dealership because we want to make sure that people aren't coming into the industry who are funding their dealership with proceeds of crime or money from terrorist organizations. Maybe also explain where the $10 goes, all the services that you offer consumers. On the consumer side, we have a, a free complaint handling uh, service. And these are real people. When you call in, you talk to somebody. You, you call in, you talk to one of our complaint handlers. Mm -hmm. um, if you've tried to solve the problem with your dealership and have been unsuccessful, they will open up a file and try to assist you. Now, we can't compel a dealer to take back a car or to you know, give you back money. 
but we will certainly try to find that amicable solution. And if the dealer has done something that perhaps they shouldn't have and they still say no, well, yes, that consumer may leave going, Omvik didn't help me, but what they may not understand is what's going on in the background is an investigation or a discipline pr uh, process or mm -hmm. something like that. And the, uh, the other thing that we do for consumers is education. Uh, not only all the resources that are available on our website, but we will across the province go to any community group, newcomer centers, school, and we have a, a 45 minute long seminar on how to buy a car, so how to protect can, yourself. So we can uh, give you a call and get you to come in. The Lemonade Car Show brought to you by Omvic, Ontario's motor vehicle sales regulator, returns after this short break. When we come back, we'll be taking your calls 800-968-7836. Thank mm -hmm. you.